Hello, baby, guys. So fucking Lana. Welcome to this Christmas edition, Nick of Jupiter. Today we're going to talk about Solana. Make the bull case. Not that it's needed. I'm guessing a lot of you here are very familiar with Solana. We're going to go through some things. I'm even going to give a price prediction this time, and we're going to talk about why Solana is pumping. If I believe in this pump, if I've changed my thoughts about Solana, what we think about this valuation. And we're going to look at the price chart. OK, so just a quick primer. Everyone's aware, probably watching this. Solana is a layer one blockchain, which is the smart contract platform. Again, blockchains are just basically public ledgers that allow you think of them as operating platforms, operating systems like Apple's iOS, right, or Google Android. And the only difference is the apps that you create on the blockchain are decentralized apps as opposed to centralized gatekeeping, rent seeking, um, you know, apps as we have in the traditional world in Web 2, right? This is Web 3. So Solana is just a smart contract platform, one of the biggest, right? Probably the second most important after Ethereum at this point in time, because remember, Bitcoin is not a smart contract platform. It's just a currency, a decentralized currency. Though layer two, uh, we won't get into that. Solana is a public base layer blockchain, so it's also called a base layer that optimizes for scalability. Its goal is to provide a platform that enables developers to create decentralized apps without needing to design around performance bottlenecks. Solana features a new timestamp system called Proof of History that enables automatically ordered transactions. It also uses a proof of stake consensus algorithm to help secure the network. Additional design goals include sub second settlement times, low transaction cost, and support for all LLVM compatible smart contract languages. Okay, this is very nice. Um, again, that proof of history is important. They have parallel um, processing um, parallelization, which is huge. It's why they're in, they're able to achieve such fast throughput, right? It's the most performant blockchain. And you know, you can read this and be told this all day, but just go use them, right? Get a phantom wallet, go use Solana, then go use Ethereum and, and other blockchains, and you're gonna see the difference, right? It's actually faster than than interactive brokers, right? It, it's as fast as traditional finance, right? It's rapid, it's cheap, you know, a couple cents or less, less than a cent for transactions. So it's, you know, just get one soul, <laughs> not even, right? Half, point uh, one soul in your wallet and you can do a lot of stuff for a lot of weeks. Um, anyways, very important that throughput, that capacity, the Solana virtual machine is just a beast. We're gonna talk about that and we're gonna talk about um, what, what different companies, we're seeing companies migrate and, and you're gonna see that right here. So 45 million in Q3 were minted in terms of NFTs, a 300% increase. Free collectible distributor Drip accounted for 87% of these. If you don't have Drip, check it out. You can start doing Drip right in the Phantom wallet and collect these free collectibles, um, you know, maybe something later. Um, Solana's virtual machine, the SVM, and general tech stack are gaining mind share and adoption from outsiders. Uh, Q3 example include Rune, and Rune is the, the founder of MakerDAO, which is the original, like the biggest DeFi protocol on Ethereum. Um, he posted um, a post to explore a Solana fork for MakerDAO. The announcement of the SVM powered L2 Eclipse is another one and visas payments integration on solana right we also had shopify we're going to talk about all these in in a quick roundup here soon tvl is up 32 percent in q3 it's it's continued to come up in q4 um a lot a lot of new programs or a lot of new points people are airdrop farming on solana there was a huge kind of jido jito airdrop right there was the pyth airdrop a big oracle network on its own kind of svm l2 implementation competitor to Chainlink, and so people are airdrop hunting there there's all these points programs and the hype is all there right it's a wonderful time in solana land the v116 upgrade reached a super majority of stake at the end of the quarter the upgrade reduces validator memory requirements introduces the capabilities and features needed for confidential transfers and improves support for zk proofs and despite all the ftx stuff Solana goes on and Rune mentioned this in his post. One of his reasons for exploring an SVM for Maker is that they have gone through the worst of the worst and they have survived easily. And now the bad actors are gone. They're out of the ecosystem. The Sam Beckman fries, the FTX and Solana stands tall. Solana thrives and, and it's, it's doing better than ever. Okay, and so you guys can go read more about the technical aspects of Solana, their proof of history, um, you know, Turbine, their propagation protocol, their parallel transaction, which, you know, makes them faster than any other blockchain. And, you know, the way they do it, it's, 
it makes more sense and it's more efficient than sharding. It makes more sense and more efficient than having these isolated uh, layer two with, with kind of a centralized sequencer that has to settle to Ethereum. And then everything is, is um, you know, fr li fractured liquidity across different... It, it's, it, it makes kind of more sense to have everything on one blockchain. That's at least the thesis here. Um, as opposed to the, the the subnet thesis, right? Since mainnet launched, several network upgrades, okay, and there's more coming out. You guys can read more about that. Let's continue. 2023, um, the year of Solana, a community-led resurgence. So there's this bonk meme coin. It's up like, I don't know what it's up, like 30,000% or something. A lot of people made a lot of money. This is at the start of the year, and now it's taken off here in December, and it's caused a lot of hype. And the Solana actually made a smartphone. And now the smartphone sold out because you can claim the airdrop for Bonk on a smartphone and the airdrop was worth 500 something dollars, at least as much as the phone. And so people were getting the phone for free and now it's sold out. And so that's exciting. That's one thing about Solana. They're doing things not differently, not just in how they're trying to achieve scalability as opposed to subnets and layer twos and kind of fractionalizing and car car compartmentalizing liquidity um, across different little layer twos and bubbles. They want everything monolithic on one chain that's highly performant and it's gonna scale with hardware and we know Moore's law, right? Everything keeps improving and doubling every few years. And so Solana will be able to scale with that. That's the way they designed it, right? We've seen this in a semiconductor space. And so uh, as those continue to improve, um, so will the so will the system, so will the blockchain, right? And not only that, so their approach to scalability is different, but also their approach to how they how they approach their users, right? There, they open Solana stores, which are similar to Apple stores, and and you can go in there and kind of explore the products, explore you know, mint an NFT, check out the phone, see how it works. And, you know, this is it, it's got the whole look of an, an Apple store, right? They have merch, whatever. And of course, now they have the phone that's that's sold out. And so they're really approaching the user um, in real life, right? Which which makes it real. Um, they were at Art Basel in Miami. And right when, when you're kind of just in crypto land, just in DeFi, you feel like your money's not real. It's in a stable coin instead of actual USD. It's in USDT. You're on margin. You don't take those profits because um, it doesn't feel like real money. It feels like monopoly money. So this kind of tangible, um, you know, connecting with real life people makes it more like a big, you know, tech company, except it's it's a decentralized blockchain infrastructure and operating system. Um, and so I think it's a it's an interesting approach. Uh, the phone is something tangible that people can hold in their hand. It's going to come with the Solana DApp Store, um, right? And and that's not, uh, you know, you don't need this phone. You'll probably they'll probably be able to have this DApp Store in other phones as well, where you'll be able to have your Phantom Wallet and interact with. Uh, you know the Solana operating system, so it's 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 a different way to approach it all, um, as opposed to a lot of other crypto that kind of stays in crypto land. I mean, a lot of Ethereum Ethereum's gas fees are so high, right? That only whales can really play around in Ethereum DeFi and Ethereum NFTs, because you know newbies and and people with smaller accounts aren't trying to pay thirty dollars of gas every time they want to do something. So they're not really optimizing for the mass audience, and so. You know, not only is Solana doing that with the way they're choosing to scale the throughput efficiency and cost of transactions, but also with, you know, the products they're trying to bring to market um, in terms of the stores and the phones. And so something to think about there. Let's continue here. The Helium community. So it wasn't just, okay, we'll talk about MakerDAO later. First, it was Helium. So Helium voted to migrate their own layer one blockchain to Solana. The migration happened and happened without a hitch, proving that Solana has a home for decentralized infrastructure projects and laying the path for future teams to make the leap themselves. Um, it's an incredible milestone, highly scalable and resilient Helium network. Helium is a very cool project you guys um, should check out. I'll make a future video about it probably. Wireless connectivity, people order these, these little IoT devices and you know they're, they're kind of mining Helium coins, but at the same time they're providing um, compute power or internet, uh, whatever it is, they have Helium IoT, they have Helium Mobile now, you know, kind of a decentralized internet system on Solana. And so you, you can see Helium and it's all over the world as well. And so I need to deep dive into that project as well, but it needed something as performant and Solana was able to support this giant system. And, and these are kind of the Helium hotspots around the world and global cellular. And so they have a phone plan, 
right? And, and again, people have all these little devices in their home and they're providing that connectivity. Um, you know, it's, it's a very cool project, right? The Helium Network. And yeah, so they're proud of their decision. Um, the 5G network is experiencing rapid growth. More than 8,000 5G radios, all the 192 countries where they have those hotspots um, deployed. 100,000 uh, devices are using the Helium network for connectivity. So that's like, you know, smartphones and things of that nature. And so, real cool. And yeah, they, they, they're very proud of, uh, you know, Solana can handle this kind of a system that needs to connect throughout the whole world with devices and have that high throughput and, you know, make sure that they're secure and make sure that there's kind of a low fail rate. So, so that was the first one, right? That was the first one. This is the year for Solana DeFi 2.0. Maple Finance returned to Solana with tokenized treasuries. Pyth moved to community governance of its Solana permission environment. We're going to talk about that in a second. Bitcoin uh, is brought to Solana. And now you can hold Bitcoin in the Phantom Wallet, right? In the Phantom Wallet, you can hold Bitcoin. The Phantom Wallet is the best wallet here out of all the wallets for crypto, in my opinion, because it not only has Solana, but you can hold a native Bitcoin on it. And you can also have an Ethereum address on it and, uh, you know, Polygon address as well. And so you can play with all the, you know, they're going to have Arbitrum and all that. It's pretty much going to be one wallet for all your needs where you can have ETH and ETH Layer 2 stuff as well as, uh, you know, Solana stuff and Bitcoin. Um, open source token infrastructure, new stable coins, and we're going to talk about a new stable coin that was just announced and launched recently, and that's the Euro. Solana flips Ethereum in 24-hour DEX falling for the first time in history. Um, so there you go, 1.5 billion 24-hour DEX volume, and that's huge. Um, and community-led validator infrastructure continue to move forward. One of the most decentralized web chains in Web3 by Nakamoto Coefficient, right? And Solana beats out, you know, almost every other chain in Nakamoto Coefficient, which is how, essentially it's how hard it would be to attack the chain. And so it's it's a measure of decentral decentralization. And Solana has the highest coefficient, right? And let's see if it shows that if we click on here, you know, validator health report, about 2,000 validators here on Solana. And, you know, it's it's second to Ethereum, right? And you can see that Nakamoto coefficient is 31. It's the highest. And that's that's great, right? Very hard to, to kind of attack this network. Um, and these validators, this is going to continue increasing, right? Ethereum has about four. This number, you, you might think it's higher. It's because Ethereum, in Ethereum land, they count a... A delegator as a validator um, just uh, they use the term inappropriately but in terms of actual nodes computers running that you know it's, it's it's a much smaller number like like this okay and so that's good um two two validator software clients uh remember this ethereum has four um this is kind of like the last piece of the puzzle right um anatoly the founder of solana mentioned that once they get to four he's going to feel like Solana beta is over and it's Solana 2.0 is here, right? Solana's fully complete. And the Fired Answer is about to be released. And there's a few other ones, including some light clients being worked on. And this is important, right? Because there's different ways to measure decentralization. It's not just how many validators, it's how many delegators. It's, you know, the wallet share, the whales, like who controls the tokens. It's the Nakamoto coefficient. It's the validator client software. And this is essentially, um, you know, th these clients is just what a piece of software or an application that a node or a validator uses to, to process transactions on a blockchain, to validate transactions. And you got to have four, um, and the theory is four with 25% market share or less each so that if you know if, if one fails then the system will continue running you don't really want one with more than one third or 33 percent and so solana is at two and the big one you know fire dancer is about to come out and apparently it has all the hype and it's kind of there it is the first version of jump fire dancer is live on testnet already right and um fire dancer the Gita labs kind and tiny dancer continues to diversify and secure the solana tech stack and this is apparently the best um, MEV boosted clients there is in, in any ecosystem, right? And and there's not even kind of meme pools in Solana. So it's interesting. So that's coming out here soon. It's already on testnet. Solana's low fees have made it an industry leader, but thanks to recent innovation from teams across the ecosystem, it's about to cost even less. So that's good with state compression. 
open source reference implementation for a ChatGPT plugin that lets users interact with the Solana network directly from ChatGPT. You should still be able to you know, do all these things once those plugins are available. Pretty good. Um, they've had a ton of hacker houses with these hacker houses where like thousand devs show up and just go crazy. And so they've had a lot of success there, over 900 projects submitted. Um, it's insane, right? Um, institutions building on Solana. All right, so institutions, and it's right after FTX, and this is surprising. This all came very fast, and it's traditional firms, right? In April, MasterCard, in collaboration with the Solana Foundation, worked on tools to help secure transactions between Web2 and Web3. Um, then they announced uh, this MasterCard crypto credential um, with, with all these other companies, and that's pretty bullish. Visa expanded its USD stablecoin pilot program to the Solana network, following months of extensive research into the Solana blockchain's tech stack and advantages. And, you know, they tried a lot of other blockchains as well, but, you know, they ultimately landed on Solana. We're excited to announce that Visa has expanded our stablecoin settlement capabilities to merchant acquirers launching pilots with WorldPay and Uve utilizing the Solana blockchain. Solana Pay, a decentralized open source peer-to-peer -peer payments protocol built on Solana blockchain by Solana Labs, integrated with Shopify, unlocking USDC payments to millions of businesses as an approved app integration. So MasterCard, Visa, Shopify, and its millions of storefronts and users, um, you know, as a payment mechanism, right? Stablecoin, and and don't and another thing, USDC and Circle, they actually call Solana home. They they have native on their native USDC on Ethereum and on some other blockchains, but they they consider Solana their home, right? So that's very important, right? Visa, a Circle, right? And Solana Pay is this kind of peer-to-peer -peer payments uh, protocol that, that we can all use. Um, so that's that's good. Bobo Guys, a popular tea shop, ran a pilot of the Solana Proward uh, loyalty program in San Fran. Uh, the results is 67% increase in monthly visits and increase in spending rolled out nationwide. Pretty cool. So some kind of traditional companies and brands there. Beyond consumer and business facing products, large infrastructure institutions began to integrate support for the Solana blockchain. Google Cloud integrated Solana on-chain data into BigQuery, unlocking new use cases. Um, so that's pretty bullish. Amazon Web Services announced support for Solana network nodes were available for deployment. So you can now deploy nodes. And I, I mentioned that there were different ways to measure decentralization earlier. Another one is where these nodes are hosted, right? Like if a lot of the Ethereum nodes are hosted on AWS, then how, you know, that's something you have to consider, not just Ethereum and even if it was Solana, right? Where they're hosted um, also matters in terms of that cloud solution. They had a breakpoint. Um, which is kind of their yearly conference, Hacker Houses, and that was all pretty successful. You guys can read all these conferences that they had. What's next? Um, continue building, right? So pretty bullish year for them. Let's continue on here. This is something else, right? Now, Pyth, there's a new era. There's this new thing, these SPE, Solana Permissioned Environments. They're essentially like layer twos for Solana. Private environments tailored to enterprise needs, offering customization, control, and scalability. Same thing you hear for these customizable subnets on Avalanche. Same thing you hear for these roll-up as a service, um, whether it's the Optimism stack or it's Arbitrum or any roll-up as a service, Polygon, right, and a supernets. Um, right. If a company needs to have KYC or regulation or, or a government or country, you can do that. Well, you can do it in near protocol to in Solana too now with these SPEs. And this is what Pyth is. And, um, and and it's just kind of it's using a Solana virtual machine. Right. And it kind of exists in parallel to to the Solana mainnet. But it's kind of this private um, environment. Uh, and so you can customize it however you want. But again, it's just more performance. Um, Solana's robust security model and native scalability and you know we're going to see what kind of spes continue to pop up in 2024 and yeah again it's an app chain environment designed for custom uses so you know it we we'll already see MakerDAO, and we're going to see some others right we're going to see some others helium and uh, i think this is pretty bullish right because they're monolithic, but at the same time, they can give you this customizability if you need it, right? If you're an enterprise with these needs, um, you know, you can just roll up this, this SPE in kind of a more performance environment. Um, so, you know, I think this is going to have some network effects here. And the more successful case studies you see, the more uh, companies and, and organizations are going to 
join after so kind of like a layer two and i totally mentioned that for him he views a layer two in solana at least as something hardware related right if you need to do some super gpu rendering i don't know um, you know large language model training kind of situation well then you can have an spe you can have a layer two and the requirements can be kind of more souped up hardware and so not everyone will be able to join but that's kind of your your need right your your customization and so it will be hardware, not software um, uh, use cases for, for that, right? Okay, why is MakerDAO migrating from Ethereum to Solana? So this was just huge, right? And Ethereum, you know, they lost DYDX, right? The biggest decentralized perps or futures trading protocol. They went to Cosmos, right? Now MakerDAO, their biggest kind of um, lending and borrowing stablecoin um, protocol. And um, it, it's trying to roll out their new chain, part of their endgame. And he posted this right after some research i believe the solana code base should be considered as the basis for the new chain and it's kind of the last step for him um his three reasons technical quality it is highly optimized for operating a singular efficient blockchain resilient ecosystem uh thriving developer community and the code base has proved itself it's already been forth it's already adapted to act as app chains right and we've seen this um you can pause the screen and read his post right here so this was huge news for for solana right this was huge news for solana right so make it out svm um one of these spes all right moving on solana leapfrogs xrp is the fifth largest crypto meme coin mania we talked about bonk probably a bunch of others um so there's the meme coin mania there's the airdrop mania um, and those point systems. Solana then breaks stablecoin transfer volume record. So breaking a ton of records here, DEX volume record, stablecoin transfer record. Um, and you can see those spikes um, right there. Stablecoin market cap on Solana just absolutely spiking past 1.8 billion and notable increase in inflow. So people are moving. You can go look at the on-chain metrics People are moving money, people are moving coins to Solana out of other ecosystems into Solana. And the TVL is currently still in an upward trajectory. Not yet at its all-time high, but in an upward trajectory. Let's take a look at it over here. So this is the TVL for Solana. Let's refresh this. Okay, this is in USD. Again, FTX was the big hit for Solana. And, you know, they took a big hit. They're back to $1.31 billion. If you look at the last month, or the last everything is just pure green, right? Double digit green change on a monthly basis. And this is not loading here. We'll get back to this because it's not loading. So next one is Render. So it wasn't just Helium. It wasn't just MakerDAO. Render is switching to Solana after 10 axing this year. The decentralized compute platform has also implemented a new burn and mint equilibrium model. Okay, so the Render Network Foundation announced today has successfully transferred its tokens onto Solana and changing the coins ticker from RDR to Render. Um, so this is huge. Render offers a marketplace for idle GPU compute. It allows users to contribute their unused GPU power to render motion graphics and visual effects, along with enabling artists to tap into the unused computer power. Rendering re refers to the process of generating an image from a 2D or 3D model by means of a computer program. So people with all these NVIDIA, AMD, GPUs, it's been a big bull market in semis, right? Um, artificial intelligence, um, chat GPT, all these things. People who have these machines, these idle GPUs, um, they're allowed to, um, you know, there's a marketplace for that idle power. And so they're going to get paid for, for that compute on Render on Solana, right? And so Render needs, like Helium, a big, let's, let's read about it. After reviewing a number of different blockchains, including pretty much Cosmos and all the ETH Layer 2s, they opted for Solana. Uh, again, they're mentioning developer community throughput, liquidity, transaction fees, programming languages, and smart contract integration. Um, and it was a landslide, 54% support from the community, and Polygon with 14, right? In anticipation of future network growth, there exists a need for high-throughput, low-latency blockchain for network settlement and node operation. M moving renders core infrastructure to Solana is a watershed moment that unlocks major new capabilities like real-time streaming and dynamic NFTs. And, you know, that's that's huge. Um, again, 
You're seeing these projects that just need that throughput. Um, and especially projects dealing with real life things, whether it's IoT devices, um, smartphones, um, GPUs, um, you know, really needing that, that throughput and, and connectivity and those low fees. So moving to Solana, and these are huge projects, right? Render is a huge project, right? It's number 50 in terms of market cap, uh, 1.5 billion, um, you know, one of the most bullish projects, kind of that AI theme and narrative as well. Solana, number five in terms of market cap. So all this bullish news, it is growing. Um, it's now in the top five largest cryptos, and we're going to get there in a second. Why Circle launched its Euro stablecoin on Solana. We already called Circle said um, Solana it's its home. Circle is the creator of USDC. Now they launched a Euro stablecoin and they launched it on Solana specifically. So Euro back stablecoin. So we can see increased adoption. Dex aggregator Jupiter will drive adoption by including stablecoin into Solana DeFi primitives. Euro stablecoins have been stifled by negative interest rates. whose volumes are expected to grow to 0.5% of global share in three years. Interest rates have been going up, right? And so amazing, amazing. Okay, so now you can hold euros, right, in stable coins. Solana Dex momentarily outpaced Ethereum amid a surge in meme coin stable coin activity. We already talked about this already. It was a huge increase for the first time ever. Uh, they outpaced uh, Ethereum. Solana jumps on Visa stable coin announcement as Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies remain flat. So Visa, we talked about this. It will introduce USDC settlements on Solana. Solana gains 80% in a month as Fire Dancer goes live on testnet. That is that third client and that, that kind of GOAT. It's seen as the GOAT, as a long-term solution to the blockchain's once frequent outages. This is a huge thing. One of the main bear cases against Solana was those, those outages, right? It's had a few outages um, where, where uh, the validator stopped producing blocks. And, you know, apparently, um, at least according to Jump Crypto, um, what happens here... Well, they've already improved the uptime. They've made a lot of updates to improve that, and it's it's really performing better than ever now. But what happened is that they believe it's a problem with the software, with the clients. Um, and again, once you have those four clients of 24, 25% or less, um, it's going to really solve that problem. And so pretty good, pretty good. Everyone's bullish on Fire Dancer. Um, and we're going to see how that plays out. Jito, we already talked about Jito. No, Jito is a liquid staking token, right? MEV powered staking rewards. Um, they're calling it the Lido of Solana, 6.8% APY. They, they had a crazy airdrop. And yeah, I mean, we can deep dive into these projects later. A lot of projects here, All right? Um, Solana, can how, how high can Solana go? 40 billion market cap. You have to remember, this thing could easily 10x, right? Let's say this is going to be the crypto that wins it all. Or it's just always going to be Ethereum and Solana, right? Like, like there's always two. You know, Burger King, McDonald's, Apple, Microsoft, um, you know, whatever. Um, CVS, Walgreen. Um, well, then. Well, let's take a look at Ethereum over here. First of all, it's, it's, it's uh, floor has to be at least this. So, you know, maybe eight times today's price. And this is Ethereum in a bear market, not at all time highs. So, you know, at least, let's say at least 400. At, Solana is over here. It's going to at least 10x. This thing could easily 10x, right? That'll be a $400 billion market cap. It'll still be lower than Ethereum at its all time highs. Um, it'll still be lower than half of current Bitcoin. And it still won't even be, you know, like one of the largest, you know, there'll still be plenty of companies bigger than it, right? Um, AMD. No, it's not AMD. We said 400. Okay, there'll still be 20 companies. But again, you know, all these companies, you know, in a bull market are going to go up as well. But you get the picture, right? I'm not saying some crazy number like 5 trillion and it'll be bigger than Apple, right? Which is a $3 trillion company. Um, I'm not going to say that, right? But we can easily 10x. We'll be 400 billion. We'll still be smaller than Bitcoin, smaller than Ethereum. And, you know, sm smaller than 20. At that point, probably 50 or more companies because they're all going to go up 10, 15% in some kind of bull market in, in the case. And, you know, so that's my point. Solana seems like it's high, 96. You know, I'm saying 10x. That's going to be 960. Sounds like a weird number. But no, both Bitcoin and Ethereum are in the thousands. They're in four-digit cryptos. And this thing, this thing, in my opinion, and I'm not saying this cycle, or I'm not saying any time. I'm saying this thing should get to 1,000. Um, so buy and hold if you want to 
10 extra money, I think is a viable strategy. Um, if not, you know, you're a trader, you, you need stop loss, you know, don't risk more than three, two or three percent of your account on any one trade. If you're a professional trader, especially trading larger size, and wait for those entry opportunities, right? You can see these things riding and surfing that 10 day moving average, you know, high tight flag into the 21, breakout, high tight flag into the 10, breakout and that's what it's going to do i think anytime it's testing the 21 in a bull market it's a good buying opportunity certainly the first test of the 50 is a great buying opportunity once you start to break the 50 for the second time uh, and the cycle might be slowing down okay so keep that in mind there's really no ta to do here this thing is very strong it's it's formed you know a couple of these high tight flags into the moving averages it's had a couple of nice entry opportunities and it's breaking out again right and I think it's a good DCA for the long term. It has a lot of upside with all this bullish news. And, you know, I think in just a market hype cycle, this thing could 5x and beat out its last all time high. Right. So I think, you know, in a proper bull market here, we'll get to 300. And then in a situation where Solana wins or Solana 1A, 1B with Bitcoin or with Ethereum or with someone else like Avalanche, then they can easily 10x. Right. Um, so the, the, the situation where they won't 10x is where something happens, another outage, a giant hack. They just something's wrong with the thesis and something like Terra Luna happens, like some kind of black swan. And, you know, people leave Solana and it just doesn't work out. But it doesn't seem that way. It seems like it's going to it's it's performant and it's getting more and more network effects, more and more institutions and big companies are moving to Solana and SPEs. And it's going to continue scaling with the hardware, right? And it's very decentralized at this point in time. That should only continue, again, with the light clients and with, with more validators um, coming onto the network. And so looks good, performs well. It's fun to use. And a lot of DeFi projects are getting ready to launch here on Solana. You can go explore these. Um, there's a few margin fi, right? There's no token yet. Kami, you know, you should go play with these, um, right? Maybe they'll have an airdrop like Jido. Um, I'm not big into the airdrop thing. I'm not going to waste time getting into that. But, you know, a few that I can suggest to you. Drift has no token yet. I don't know if it's too late for any of these, but you can check it out. Meteora has no token yet. Um, you know, big, big DeFi ecosystem, big GameFi ecosystem as well, right? Star Atlas, Aurori, and, and a ton of other games are also developing on Solana, right? Um, pretty good, right? Pretty good. Price to fees ratio, 742. So let's just compare this with kind of another top 10 here. Avalanche price to fees uh, ratio, 53. Avalanche seems a lot cheaper at this point in time. You guys can check out the Avalanche bull case video, Ethereum 65. So Solana is definitely commanding a premium right now because 65 and you know both single digits for, for those two. And Solana price to fees ratio is 700. So it's like one of these NVIDIAs, which was trading at a high PE multiple. Remember, growth stocks are going to command a high multiple because people are willing to pay a higher premium for future growth, right? The stock market is a discounting mechanism and you're paying for future anticipated growth. And so you can see that right there that, that it's trading um, uh, at a premium. Which, what you're going to want to do is go to price to fees. Right, you're gonna want to go max. They're not gonna let me. They're gonna let me. Okay. And what you're gonna want to do is price to fees. Is you know this is something you're gonna want to do for something growing like this. It seems overvalued, but compared to its own history, it's the cheapest it's ever been. Seven hundred, but this thing was trading in the thousands always. It was even trading five thousand. Eight thousand was as high. Eight thousand price fees fully diluted. Right. Not only is it trading cheaper to its own relative history, but look at the background, the fees, the green. It's making more money than it did when it was trading more expensively. Back here, it was making, look at the fees, $4,000, less than $10,000 a day, yet it was commanding a 5,000 PF multiple, right? Now this thing is making $300,000, $400,000 a day, let's say $300,000 a day, and it's commanding uh, a, a multiple that's one tenth uh, the size. So that's that's a bullish divergence, if you ask me, um, right? The cheap can always get cheaper and the more expensive can always get more expensive. If you wait for a low PE stock, you're never gonna get that stock. And stocks have a low PE for a reason because there's no growth and you pay for future growth, all right? I'm not saying it's a good time. This thing is breaking out for traders. I wouldn't chase this right here so far from the 10 day. But any pullbacks 
um, I'm bullish for the long term. That's the bull case for Solana, guys. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. Merry Christmas, guys. Um, I really appreciate your thumbs up. Um, I hope this video earned your thumbs up, your like, and your subscribe um, for Christmas. Want to get to 1,000. Doesn't seem likely. So let's get to 900 subs. Love you guys. See you on the next one. Peace.